everyone, and welcome back to my complete career run through in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And here we are with Durl and Kerman in orbit around Drez, waiting to return home. Now, it is a polar orbit, and I don't know what kind of complications that might result in. Uh, I hope not too many because Drez's gravity isn't much anyway. But before we get to that, I need to time warp to the correct location for the transfer to Kerbin. Now, tra the location to transfer from Kerbin to Drez is not the same as the reverse journey. In fact, for the reverse journey, I think we need a 30 degree angle. Uh, my notes say negative 329.68. There's, there's a calculation in, uh, in uh, my intermediate rocket science video that uh, I just give the equation to figure out these angles, so the approximate equation. It assumes that the orbits are circular, and uh, they're they're not quite. But anyway, uh, enough of that. So what I want is Kerbin to be around here, actually. It shouldn't take too long when you think about it. Uh, Kerbin is going to go faster than Drez, so probably we could transfer back uh, in short order. Uh, but uh, we are we are in a relatively low orbit, which means that we cannot time warp at full speed. So I'm going to actually switch back to the flag, and with the flag we can time warp. All right, so let's go to the flag. Okay, can't quite see where the flag might be. I've already zoomed in quite a lot, but it is in the dark. So what can I do? Oh, there it is. There it is. Aha, alright, so, our flag on Drez, and there's no point bringing up the rest of the displays. Let's just take a look here and see when Kerbin might be at a 30 degree, degree angle. Time warping. That looks about right. Protractor. Uh, yeah, that looks like a 30 degree angle. All right, let's let's hope that that's the ideal transfer time, and see how much it's going to cost us. Uh, switching back to oh, if it lets me to the lambda two. Okay, so here comes the tough part. I so I want to return home, but I've got this really unfortunate inclination, and you see, I can't just burn out because it'll start inclining. Actually, let me just show you that. Let's say I add a maneuver and just say, I want to get out of here. Well, it's got to spew me like this. And even though I've got an orbit smaller than Drez's orbit, if I keep trying to burn like this, all it's going to do is tilt me like that. So first I'm going to have to correct the inclination. So that's got to waste a little bit more fuel. And then I'm going to have to figure out the rest of it. So... Let's say something like that. That's a little bit high. I guess maybe we might have to actually get into more of a circular thing anyway. I might actually have to waste some fuel here. Well, no, that's not a bad trajectory right there. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's say we work with this. Now, setting Kerbin as a target, let's do another burn. Let's say as close to Drez as possible. Right around here. Oh, that still... That tilts us out this way. Hmm.
still quite a lot of tilt to it. It's not gonna get us in quite right. Now we've also got the inclination with respect to Kerbin to worry about, which is a totally separate thing, and we'll fix like we did on the way here at the ascending node. Uh, well, I guess considering all the all the strange maneuvering we're doing, that's not too bad. Let's try and fix it though. Let's say on this burn I uh, fix the inclination a little bit more. Okay, so I've got an encounter with Kerbin. But here's here's the question. How how do I know how much this is gonna cost? It does it doesn't look like an optimal trajectory at all. Um and just a uh, adjustment at this node, this first node is going to cost 400. And frankly, the adjustment doesn't look ideal by any stretch of the imagination. Fling me off like this. Uh, hmm. Well, hmm. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to point the craft in the direction of the current node. And 400 delta V. I'm going to try and figure out how to do that. But I'm going to get rid of this node. 1,500. Uh, I think that's within our delta V budget. I think we can do that. And I don't think the plane change maneuver in the middle will be a big difference. Okay. Alright, uh... Yeah, let me replot, and I'll, I'll stop the video, I'll replot and get back to you, and I guess, I guess we can do this. So, so yeah. Yay! Okay, rather than do all three at the same time, because my burns are probably going to be... I mean, when I say at the same time, I mean keep them all plotted. I, I don't think that's reasonable, because my burns are probably not going to be that accurate anyway. So I'm going to do one at a time. And so first is this burn, which will correct my inclination to... Well, not fully correct my inclination, but to an orbit that is very close to escape trajectory. I mean, uh, this end, uh, if we just boost a little bit more from uh, the periapsis here, we should uh, escape. So, And it's about the same burn as I had plotted the first time around. So let me do this first. And uh, this will save us because if, for instance, I plot the next one and it looks like we really don't have enough uh, fuel, then I can still remain in orbit around Drez. So there's a precautionary element to this. Okay, now I also want to make sure that uh, we are firing the right... Yeah, that's good. Oh, wait. Aha. We are controlling from the wrong side. I want to uh, control from here. Right. Huh. Because we were uh, controlling from the docking port. Okay. This is not the burn that needs to be extremely accurate. Interestingly, uh, I saw a mod that's an uh, in-game calculator. I might... Uh, not in this uh, series, obviously, because this is completely stock. But uh, in another series, I might actually put that in so you can see what the heck I'm calculating. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if everybody's really interested in that sort of thing. but. In retrospect, it is a shame that I didn't uh, put a docking port uh, pair here instead of a decoupler. 
uh, as suggested in the comments because of course then in that case we would be able to dump this intermediate stage which is completely useless now well except for some monopavons I suppose all right uh, we should be yeah we're, we're, we're quite good now let's say we add another maneuver and we continue to correct this tilt Keep in mind that it, when you correct a, the inclination like this, it also pushes your orbit out like that because there's more energy in the orbit, right? Uh, all these orbits are you know, sort of uh, constant energy orbits. In other words, this orbit has a certain amount of energy. If you add more energy to the orbit, it changes it like this. So anyway, but that sort of helps. But let's say we do boost out from our apoapsis like that. Periapsis, sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. That goes all wonky. Alright, so we won't do that. I would really like to boost out of my periapsis, though. Just correcting inclination seems to be a big deal, though. But let's do it. I want to uh, just barely keep in. The reason I didn't do it uh, this far out in the first place is because you can see this is a 10 day two apoapsis orbit so we would be way out of position for for Kerbin in that case. We're actually probably a little bit late right now too. Now this requires me to go around once and then after that we'll burn around here. I think hopefully that will get us there. I mean, it might be that I have to burn all the way out here, in which case that's not the best thing. But While it's doing that, I'm going to try and calculate my my reserves of fuel. Uh, we have roughly 5 tons of fuel. I can tell that because if uh, 1 ton of liquid fuel is 90... Uh, 1 ton of fuel is 90 units of liquid fuel and 110 units of oxidizer. And I've got, let's say, 450 here. That's uh, 450 divided by 90 is 5. So I've got 5 tons of fuel. And it's a 16.5 ton craft. So, what is our mass ratio? 1.43. Uh, well, could be worse, I suppose. Let's speed up the time warping here. Two thousand eight hundred delta V, not bad. I think that's that's definitely good enough to go home. And it saves me a lot of strife when it comes to plotting the course home because I don't need to be quite as stingy about everything, including this burn right here. If I found out that I had really low margins right now, I might not want to do this correction even though it might help in the long run. Having it flat like this will uh, ensure that when I exit Drez, I won't have as much inclination with respect to Kerbin, hopefully. At least it won't be like this really weird inclination, like the ones I showed before. Okay, now we're just pushing our orbit out, so we don't need too much of that. Okay, so next thing, plot for Kerbin. So we go out. Keep going out. Still not quite right. Well, no, we, 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 we'll touch. See, we want to touch on the opposite side of the sun is the thing. Oh, that's not too bad. And 1,300 is fine. Now I'll also plot the plane change here. And you can see it's 4.8, but uh, 
If I didn't do that little correction, it might have been more like 11. Oh, that's pretty far off. So we, we're very far off here, but that can be adjusted based on where you burn here. So right now we're burning here. Let's say we burn a little bit closer in. Does that put us closer or farther? I should have gotten the number. Looks closer. Separation 6 million kilometers. Let's say I even do it closer to periapsis. And I do need to boost a little bit more to get a hit. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, now this plane change maneuver is totally off. It's not in the right place, so I have to do that again. Okay, so barest inklings of an encounter with Kerbin. Let's see now if I can get this a little bit closer in. You can see what I'm doing is actually pushing my um, ascending node into it so that our orbits are going to be crossing right at the point of the encounter. That's basically what I was doing. So, for instance, if I undo that, you can see my ascending node was over here. But even if our orbits aren't perfectly aligned, like it's uh, 1.5, if I push the node into the encounter space, then that means our orbits are actually crossing at that point, which will get me closer to Kerbin. Okay, and I think that's fine. Uh, 1,414 is well within our budget. And... I guess this is us departing Trez. Now, let me make sure that we've got all our experiments done yeah that's good I don't think we're going to be able to log temperature yeah that's typical we didn't do a near dres uh, EVA report but that's it's too late for that now mm, where is our maneuver node ah there it is Okay, the critical burn for home. Trying to get this as good as possible. The estimated burn time hopefully... No, it's nowhere near correct, is it? I don't think so. Fortunately, uh, our orbit is more or less straight, if you see. So, boop, boop, boop. so we've got a lot of time to burn, and let's do that now. Uh, not bad, not too far off. Okay, so here's the tricky part. Uh, normally at this point I'm looking for an encounter, but I'm not here. I'm just trying to get my first burn as close to what I have planned as possible so that this burn over here will work. So, and it's not going to be that close. Uh, um, if you can take a look at the... Well, I guess it's pretty close. The purple dotted line here is my intended path out to here. And I guess it's it's pretty good. The blue line is after we hit this node. Actually, I think it's uh, the green line is after we hit that node, and the blue line is after we hit Kerbin. As if I need that kind of information. Okay, so getting rid of this maneuver node, it looks like our mid-course burn is 622. And that's somewhat expected because we've got a pretty heavy change here to get our encounter. We aren't even anywhere near an encounter right now. 
So that's a critical burn there. All right, but uh, we've got 110 days to that, so let's time warp to it. I uh, passed it as is traditional. So here, I go pointing at the maneuver node. If I can find it, it is an inclination change, so I have to be in this circle. All right and fire okay now I do have to take a look to see if I'm getting a encounter okay and I want to get as close as possible as usual so I'm looking at that periapsis going down and uh, oh Mimis encounter Mimis is trolling me okay okay maybe we can pass that hopefully hopefully uh, yeah uh, that looks like it's stalling there so now I'm gonna try the other directions I was at 180 now let me try the direction this way radially and that brings me in closer. And that's as close as that gets. I guess I might as well try prograde. That's worse. So the other way. Could just use RCS for all this, but. Uh, no, it's about that. And it's probably not even going to be that once we get into the Kerbin system. So, let's get there. Okay, welcome to the Kerbin system. Our flight path is currently very polar. It's not necessary to fix that. And... It doesn't cost that much though. Doesn't really help us much. I'm trying to get into Kerbin's atmosphere for the arrow breaking. And simultaneously apparently doing an inclination change that I don't really need to do. Okay, with no deadly re-entry I think that should be fine. Well, except I, I keep forgetting whether I need to worry about how the shoots deploy. I don't know. I don't know if they rip off or anything like that. Okay, I'm gonna say that. And actually it shouldn't be necessary to wait until the node. I think it'll even be cheaper to burn right now. Let's say that maybe a little bit higher. All right. So we are coming in. This stage will just be dropped in orbit along with this one too. Actually, all of this has to go. Not dropped in orbit, uh, dropped on re-entry. I am going to burn some speed off as much as possible before we head in. Right around here would be a good time. So retrograde vector, but need to keep our periapsis up as well. That's why I'm in this screen. Looks like we're going to be coming in over water, so that's good. Okay. That's our fuel depleted. I'm going to dump that by undocking. 
So now it's just us here. And let's verify that. And in fact, we can use mod propellant to further decelerate. But only to a certain degree because we are hitting atmosphere now and I need to decouple. Come to think of it, I could have just trans. Well, the nukes are probably still more efficient. I could have transferred fuel into this and used these rockets in order to decelerate, but, but I think the nukes would still have been doing a better job with their ISP. Okay, well, I think I need to ditch it. Much as I like to hold on to it. Mm. Yep. Oh, I think it might actually be too late. Oh, no, it's fine. Just barely. We are not slowing down very much considering how much how much flames and noise this is all going. Huh. Okay, uh, we are in orbit and we are coming down. The question is whether I slow down enough for parachutes, if if that's even an issue in in stock. In uh, with fair narrow space and deadly reentry, those parachutes w can snap off. But I forget if that happens in stock. And since I haven't happened, haven't had it happen to me in in this series, I still don't know. So. Okay, looks like the other stages have disappeared. Well, okay, at least it's recognized that I'm no longer attached to them. It's just us in the parachutes. Well, Derlin Kerman's looking good. We need to have, just to be safe, below 500 meters per second to deploy parachutes. Well, Derlin Kerman is looking a little bit worry now, but that's because we haven't deployed parachutes, which we are doing now. SAS off. So, the margins on this mission were pretty tight. I mean, when you look at it, we barely had enough fuel. I mean, we had just enough fuel to get back from Drez. Now, again, with the Joule system, we can air brake around Joule, so that would save us fuel. But I don't think we really have enough fuel to uh, then transfer to one of Jules moons and then escape as well. So, and uh, the Delta V is, is a little bit more than for Drez to do the Holman transfers, the transfer to Jewel and transfer from. So, so we do need some redesigning if I intend to take this to Jewel. Now, one redesign could be that little... Uh, Use uh, replacing the de decoupler with a docking port, but that's that also requires me to add more RCS to this and the RCS ports to this portion. So all that has to be weighed in balance, and uh, we are going to unlock new parts after this mission because we are going to acquire more science. So uh, I might find some other way to redesign it that is even more potent to make sure that our dual mission works out correctly. In which case I might also test that out on either the moon or Minmus first. Probably the moon this time. We tried it on Minmus last time. Trying it out on the moon is good because it'll uh, give us a better analog to some place like Val. Val has about the same gravity as the moon. So I'll be looking for that. Okay, why don't I just time warp? I wonder if we've gotten a temperature reading like here. Couldn't hurt. No, we haven't. Flying over Kerbin waters. Okay. And maybe once we touch down, we can get another temperature reading. How about the barometer, which I never seem to use? Oh yeah, flying at Kerbin. Okay. 
Got that. The seismometer we already used, yeah. We did get one temperature scan there. So once we touch down, I should be able to get more. Okay. Very dramatic and splashy. Okay, let's log temperature here. Yeah, from Kerbin's water. A little bit, but something is better than nothing. And log pressure data. Indeed. All right, so let's recover the vehicle and see how much science we accumulated. It's actually less than I would have thought. Uh, 1,086. I think we've done better missions than this. I'm not sure if that was in this save, though, or not. Uh, really, they should give extra points for Drez. Drez, Drez is not the most obvious location. Uh, we, need, we need to give Drez some more love, and uh, right now this pointage does not quite, quite make it. But, you know, 1,086 signs is nothing to sneeze at, and we've got all the usual stuff, and we even got some stuff from Kerbin, because we haven't done that before. All right, let me just uh, check out the R&D building and see what kind of signs we might want to unlock. Okay, so this is the current state of our tech tree, and... Wait a minute. Uh, we got 1,000 signs. Did we have 800 sitting around doing nothing? I wonder how I managed that. Anyway, so we've got stuff. Oh, we've, we've got airplane parts. I need to figure out what to do with those some, at some point. I'm sure there's more science available for those who would use these airplane parts. And I haven't built an airplane in this series, so maybe that's something I need to look into. Our main goal would be Jewel, though. Oh, and poor old Jeb. Don't, don't, don't worry, I haven't forgotten Jeb sitting there on Duna. Though uh, I hear he's quite comfortable. Probe parts are useless as usual, and so are the ion engines. These decouplers I like. Uh, not decouplers, adapters I like. And the big docking ports will help if we want to build a research station. That's 550 science. Pretty sure this one over here is what gives me the... the why do I always forget the name of the really big rocket that everybody loves to hate, or or just loves. Anyway, you know, 1500 thrust, that one. Uh, mainsail, there we go. Uh, gravioli, and I guess if we wanted to make uh, planes, the nose cone, so that's, yeah, that could be useful. Those wheels are probably too much for a vehicle that we would send to, to Jeb. Uh, we would need these, these guys, turbojets, and probably the intakes as well. If we were going to make a plane, that is. Well, let's let's do some purchasing. I want these these decouplers. Uh, not decouplers. I keep saying that. I want those. Okay. Hmm. Rocket-wise, I don't even know what I need to do to get this. Probably this one. I don't actually want any of these parts. But... Maybe I should. Yeah, yeah, okay. And yeah, there's the mainsail and the uh, infamous giant red tank. Now, other than that, I was going to look for these. So I guess I could get both. Yeah, let, let me get the mainsail, because that's just natural. These two I definitely don't need, but I might need in order to unlock future technologies. For instance, this one or this one is probably necessary for whatever this is. I would like the advanced science tech, but we don't have enough any uh, anymore for that. So I should just unlock uh, the jets, yeah. All right, I think that does it for me in this episode. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the adventures of Derlin Kerman exploring Drez and returning home safely, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.